Well, this year, as I moved into, and last year I transitioned, and the tag on my last uh, message from last year, the, the time that we gathered together, it seems like a long time since we've gathered together. We've had uh, Christmas fell, and then we took off for the New Year's, and we've had all this thing. But by the way, just before I get into my message, Happy New Year. May 2020 be the year that God blesses you the most. Amen. And uh, I'm praying that for each of us. But as we look at this and we begin to think about, I, I shared with you at the close of that message, the, the real message that God has placed upon my heart for this year, this season, God has put a simple little word that, uh, on my heart and it's simple, simple four letter word. It's called grow. God put that on my heart and I couldn't shake it. I, I, I wrestled with it. I said, God, give me some, some really uh, elaborate thing that I can bring to the church this year so that we can emphasize uh, what you're wanting to do. And all of a sudden, God just spoke to my heart and he said, teach them to grow. Just grow. And the simple thing that God began to put on my heart was that we must grow. Now, this may be a, a, a something that, that you may not know this and you may, you may find this as insignificant, but... You don't remember this, and most of you won't remember that last year I preached a message twice with this same title. Everybody goes, well, I didn't know that. The only one who found it was Ben, and that rascal pulled it up on his computer. He has all my sermons in his file back there, and he goes, wait a minute, we've already preached this one. I said, yes, we have. So he had to come up with a new name for it. But grow is simply the, the message that I want to preach from. My text is found in a simple place of Ephesians 4 and 15. In our discipleship classes on the 400 level, they actually have to read and memorize the, about six or eight verses more than my text this morning. But I wanted to use this as the, the point of reference to where we can start this series from. And that is in Ephesians, the fourth chapter in verse 15. It, it's a simple message, but I believe that it incorporates everything that we must do to grow. And we'll get into more of that message and more of that text in a little bit later. But this year, I want us to concern ourselves about growing and growth. And I want us to look back and I want us to be able to say, and as God tarries and God gives us the opportunity, I want us to look back at when we click over into 2021, we can look back and say that I've grown from my past year, that I'm, that I'm grown. Now, I, I can tell you that I have grown. Some of you are looking in shock right now. I am not any taller, so don't accuse me of getting any taller. I haven't grown this way, but I am definitely growing this way. My son Joey, as I went in the office to change and get my preacher garment and I get, got my tie and stuff on, put my shirt on and I could barely button my buttons and I was breathing heavy and Joe go, looks at me and he goes, Dad, I think you're swelling. He didn't say I was swell. He said I was swelling. So I can tell you that, that I, I am growing. It's just, in, in, and I am in shape. I'm just in a round shape. But I am in shape, Martin. I, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm there. And so I, I wanted to just tell you that this idea of growing is something that we must do. I want us to look at that. Go ahead and pull my text up, if you will. In Ephesians, the fourth chapter, in verse 15, it says, Speaking the truth in love may grow up in, the, in all things into him who is the head, Christ. I want to use that this morning to kind of set the stage for this series of messages that I'm going to be preaching you see, I, I had an acrostic that came and, and it spells out the word grow. And today's message is, begins with the letter G and it's to give our lives completely and totally to Christ. To surrender our will to His will. To surrender our action to His action and become that that He has called us to be. When we look at this, we can give so many different things to so many different causes. But the greatest thing that we can do is give ourselves totally and completely to Christ. When we look at the idea of growth this year and the, and the opportunity to grow, it is, it is something that we all do. We've done that. We've seen that. We know about that. You see, growth is, is not uh, uh, necessarily uh, in, in the church is not as much of an importance. It doesn't seem to be. This year is about growth and it's about uh, intentional and progressive growth. When Paul wrote this letter to the church to Ephesus, his purpose was not to, to have a big building or a large number of followers. No, it was, it was to see the maturity of the believers in this young church that they started earlier in his ministry. 
Your growth is not something that you just sit around and think about doing. How many of you sat down today and said, I think I'm going to grow? We didn't. No, most of us don't. We don't. The growth is not something that we just sit around and ponder the thought of. We don't think about it. It's as natural as breathing for a child. When you bring a child into the world, you watch it grow. I never will forget when I was just a child, I, I was very uh, stunted in my growth. I was, I was extremely short for my age. Uh, my grandson is taking after me a little bit, but when I was in the, I was, was growing and my mom took me to the doctor and I never will forget, I was sitting on the end of the table and the doctor walked around me and he looked at me and he looked at me again and he, he tested a few things and he looked at me and then he, then he grabbed me right here and kind of pulled on me a little bit and my mom became very concerned and she said, is everything okay? And the doctor walked around on the other side and did it again and he looked and he said I'm just trying to stretch him he'll grow eventually I'm gonna tell you something I, I, I grew and I did start growing it may have been delayed but I thank the Lord that, that the normalcy of, of that is that you see growth in everything that we do growth is not something that you plan to do it's not intentional in your human life it's just something that you do now I know about a few things about the, the growth of a child. I've seen five kids grow up in my home. I've seen several of my grandchildren grow. And I've seen them grow into the places that they are. Change happens as we grow. Things look differently when we grow. And as we mature, we should grow. That is evident in our who we are and what we are. The same is true for a plant. The same is true for a plant. As you plant the seed, it is normal for the seed to be planted in the ground in good soil and watered properly with the right amount of sunlight. It will grow. Unless you're, my wife is taking care of you and it will die. I'm just kidding. She's not here to defend herself, so I better be careful. But when I look at that position of, of where she is and I look at the purpose of what she's doing I realize and recognize the the work of God and the hand of God in her life I realize and recognize the message of growth how that we must grow it's not only to see a child grow it's not only to see a plant grow but it is for us to grow spiritually that we must be concerned about have I grown this year have I seen growth in my life have I grown spiritually am I more aware of God in, my, in the presence of my life and if that is true, then we must take the evidence of that we have committed to these changes. But there are many of us that can look back on this past year and say, I don't think I've grown at all. As a matter of fact, some, some of us may have to look back on last year and say that I've slipped from where I was. I'm not as committed as I used to be. I'm not as dedicated as I, I'm not as spiritual as I used to be. Sometimes we get that way in our life and we begin to see the growth stunted. We begin to see the, the stagnancy of our spiritual walk. But one of the things that we have to realize is, is that we uh, see the comparison of what Jesus wrote. You see, spiritual growth is a little different. It requires us to make efforts to, to achieve growth. It is required for us to make some efforts to see growth. It just doesn't happen on accident. It is intentional growth. If we're going to grow spiritually, it is intentional growth that is different. When we see that, we can understand it. It is true that we are reborn when we accept Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. As Jesus taught Nicodemus in John, the third chapter, in verse 17. Go ahead, Johnny, and pull that up there. We must be born again in John, the third chapter. It says, there was a man uh, of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. A man uh, came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi... We know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do, the thing, do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter his, a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. 
So if we're going to see spiritual growth, the beginning of growth happens when we become a spiritual baby. When we're going to see spiritual growth, we've got to see and realize that we are born into infancy. We have a beginning. We have a... a, a how many of you celebrate your birthday? How many of you have celebrated more birthdays than you'd like to remember? Thank you for that honesty. I, I looked at, at, at some of the things that are coming up, and we have calendar days that, are, that, that I keep calendars of the birthdays, and some of us are, 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 we, we are running out of room on the ca birthday cake to put candles. We are, we, are, we are celebrating many years over, and, and that's just another sign of our blessing from God. But here's the thing that I want you to realize this, and I want you to realize this. Just as you were born and you have that birthday, you need to write down the day when you encountered Jesus Christ. You need to celebrate that day, because that's the day when you were reborn. That's the day when you spiritually were born, and you had your first beginning when you experienced and surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. Now, I, I've asked, and, and I know that, that Brother Farr, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but, but you can take... Can tell me about how many years he's been saved. He can tell me, uh, he, you, he can go all the way back and remind me of when he met Sister Farr in the choir. He can go all the way back to remember those things. And some of us, we need to remember the time when we accepted Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. When we look at that place, that was when our life changed. And some of you, that's the last time you encountered Christ and truly made a commitment to Him. Some of you have pushed that out and let it slide and sag. And, and you've forgotten about all those things. And your spiritual growth has not grown from the infancy stages. But when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are born and reborn. And you are a new child in the Lord. And you need to grow. Come on, I can tell you this, that it is normal for a child to grow. Look at him, he, he's looking away from me. I remember it wasn't too long ago when I held that little guy in my hand. I could just about hold him in one hand, then it won't be a couple more years if he's taller than I am. But, but as we look at the physical growth of a, a child, so we must look at the spiritual growth of us as individuals. And we can't look in the mirror or we can't measure our, our waistline or, or look in the mirror and tell that we've grown in that stature. Because spiritually we can't see where we are unless we think mentally and say, have I grown? Have I grown in my relationship with Christ? Has 2019 been a year that I have grown? Has it been a year that I have seen growth in my life? Has it been a year that I have grown with my relationship with God? Am I closer to Him now than I've ever been? The Bible talks about it in Revelation where it says you have lost their first love. And I believe that there are a lot of churches that are going through the motions that aren't growing. They're dead. They're dying. And people, listen, I'm going to tell you, so it doesn't matter your age. You can still grow no matter what age you are spiritually. You should be growing just as much when you're old as you are when you're young. You, the, more that I, the more that we realize that, the more that our relationship with Him can grow fonder and greater than it's ever been this year. That should be our goal in, in 2020 is to grow that relationship that was started as a child. As an infant, we are reborn. We must be born, the Bible says, of the Spirit. That it is born of the Spirit, because God seeks such to worship Him, that worship Him in spirit and in truth. It is about the love relationship that we have with God growing stronger and fonder than it has ever been. In the same manner, the plant grows from a seed. So we grow spiritually from a seed of faith God has given to each of us. You see, you may, not real, you may not think you have any talents. You may not think that you have a lot of qualifications. You may not think that you have a lot of abilities. And you may not. You may be the one that's given one talent, but are you using it for God's glory? Are you using it for His glory to be lifted up and to, and to touch Him? You see that the Bible tells us that there's a seed of faith in each of us. For I say, uh, through the, the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Inside of each of us, from creation, is given a measure of faith. It is, and that word measure can be translated as a seed. It's a beginning. It's a start. There is faith within each one of us. You know what? So many of us will put faith in so many different things. We put our faith in our talent. Come on. How many of you know sometimes that runs out? 
You put faith in your money. How many of you know that that runs out? You put faith in all kinds. You put faith in your health. You put faith in all these kind of things. And I'm going to tell you something. These things fade and they will go. But one of the greatest things that we can do is put faith in Jesus Christ. And you will never regret the commitment that you invest in him. The more that I invest in him, the more that I try to, to invest in what he has given to me, I take that measure of faith and I continue to stretch it. And here's the problem. Most of you don't realize this. I was going to say this later on in my message, but I feel like I needed to say it now. If you don't make the effort to grow because of God's love for you, he will bring things in your life that will cause you to grow. God loves you so much that he will let you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He will let you walk in circumstances and situations that will shake the foundations of your life so that you will turn to him. And the things that we see God doing in this world today are trying to get us to exercise that measure of faith. But the sad thing is, is that most of us, instead of turning to God in those times of troubles and struggles, we'll turn to the medicine counter or we'll turn to a doctor or we'll run to another place or another way. I'm going to tell you something. All those things are great. All those things are good. Counselors and doctors and medicines. There's nothing wrong with any of them. But I need to grow in God and I need to turn to him first. If I'm going to grow, that measure of faith must be put into him before it is in anything else or anyone else. I never will forget a few years ago, I had a man that came to me and he said, I'm really struggling, Pastor, but I, have ha I found somebody who I can console in that has really affected my life. And I thought for sure that he was going to say he'd turn to God. And he said, I was... At home, and all of a sudden, Dr. Phil spoke to me. And he said some words that will never, that, that will change my life forever, and I will never be the same. And I said, you know, Dr. Phil uh, is, is a doctor and all those kind of things, but Dr. Phil, have you ever met him in person? Have you ever talked to him in person? Have you ever, uh, have you ever had an opportunity to do anything directly with Dr. Phil? Has he ever been your home? Has he, and I said... See, the difference is, is the God that I'm talking about that wants to have a relationship, wants, not only wants to live in your house, but wants to abide in you. And he wants to be a, as close as your next breath. God wants to be a part of your life. Let, let's go on. Let me, let me get into this measure of the seed. And speaking of this plant and growth, the parable of the seed. I look at this in Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus teaches his disciples and those around him about this parable of the seed and the sower. It says, and then he spoke many things to them in the parables, saying, behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and the birds came and devoured them. And some fell in stony places where they did not have much earth. And they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them out. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop. Some 100, some 60, and some 30. And he who has an ear, let him hear. Here that story begins to be a pondering thought. And the parable begins to be one that we struggle with. And we understand that God's word is a seed that's planted with each one of us. And that seed measures, that measure that's within us. When we read this word, it begins to unfold in us that seed to grow. It causes our faith to be... In... See, the more that I know about God the more my faith grows in who he is. The more that I know of him, and the more that I know about him, the more that I know how much he loves me. The more that I think about that, I tell everyone, I said, every year you need to go through the Gospel of John and read how much God loves you. You need to see how God worked in your life to transform you, to minister to you, to keep you. When no one else cared, God did. God loves you. And he continues to love you. You need to know that. But so many times things in our life begin to cause these seeds to stop growing. That seed of faith to be choked out. And it begins to die. But Jesus and his disciples, he began to explain to them. And he said, let me explain this parable so you understand it a little better. He goes on and he said in the 18th verse. And he says, therefore hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom 
and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what is sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the way, by the wayside. He says, but he who received the seed on stony places is he who hears the, the word and immediately receives it with joy. And it says, and yet uh, it has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. But when tribulation and persecution arise because the, of the word, immediately he stumbles. Verse 22 says, and now when he received among the, the thorns is he who re hears the word and and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. But he who receives the seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it. And he who indeed bears fruit and produces some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. When I saw that, that, that scripture began to speak to me about this parable and that Jesus was trying to tell his disciples, it's not just about you getting to heaven, it's about how much fruit you can bear. Amen? It is not, God wants to bless you. God wants to heal you. God wants to supply for you. God wants to provide for you. God wants to stick closer than a brother. But it's because he wants to use you so that he can produce his glory from it. When we think about the idea of this measure that's placed within us, so many things in this world do their best to choke out the blessing and the ability for us to have faith in God. Everything about this world would like to squeeze you and tell you 2020 is going to be terrible. I remember last year, anybody else remember last year when we started off 2019? I said, man, Lord, please don't give me another year like that. We started off 2019, I came in and Daryl, you remember, we came in, somebody had kicked in that back window back there, they broke in, they broke into the church, they took all the pews, they tore the ends off the pews, they took a bass guitar and they smashed all these lights, they tore up things, they threw offering plates, they, they threw knives into the walls up front. I mean, it was just, they, they devastated, and, and, and I'm going to tell you something, when I walked in here, my heart sunk. I said, Lord, what, the, what can be worse than this this year? But you know what? You look around this place. Insurance, God blessed us with that. Insurance covered most of it. And a lot of the things that we were able to fix. Don Faulkner got up on a ladder way up there. Don't do it no more, Don. <laughs> and we were up there and we fixed those. We bent those chandeliers. We fixed them. We put new glass in it. And we, we switched things around. We got the chairs instead. Of, aren't these nice to sit in? Listen, if you're really tired some Sunday night, you can come and sleep in here with. But I look at this thing and I said, what the devil meant for evil, God blessed us with it. He took a seed and see that seed could have easily been choked out. But I can tell you right now, I look around this room and I can tell you the evidence of it. That God has been very, very good to us. Amen. Amen? God has blessed us. And he took the very bottom and base. And he made us think, and the enemy would like to have said, look at what your God did for you. We got security cameras now. We got alarm systems. And don't you just love those things? <laughs> yes, a new bass guitar. Man, he says, I like that. But, but all of those things could have been the very negative side of this. And some of you, Melissa, you got some bad news this year. Some of us got some reports from the doctor that they didn't look very good. But I'm going to tell you something. I stand here today to tell you no matter what the enemy brought against you last year, God is with you this year. And God is wanting you to exercise your faith in him for this year to be a better year than it's ever been. You grow spiritually when you push those things aside. And you grow spiritually when you get to deny the very works of the enemy when he comes against you. Let me turn to page two, still with me. Scared everybody to death right there, didn't I? I've only got five more pages to go. No, I'm just kidding. You see, I believe that we must find that way to have fertile ground. We must have that way to have good ground. We must find a way so that our hearts and our minds can be tendered and open so that we can grow. Because I will tell you this, God will bring things in your life to wake you up so you will grow. He will bring things in your life that will bring and cause change 
in your life. Garrett, it wasn't too many years ago, and I'm sure Bonnie can flash back to that, as it was, if it was yesterday, of a, of a New Year's Day when she found out that Garrett was in the hospital, could have easily died right there. As a matter of fact, doctors thought it was done. But God saw a new thing that he was doing. And he brought change in Garrett's life. And one of the things that I can tell you is the changes that he brought were maybe not physical. Garrett's not as strong as he used to. He, he can't run like he used to. But I'm going to tell you something. He's a spiritual giant because of the changes that he made that day when God changed his life. You can sit here and complain about your problems. And I, I get that way sometimes. When I got out of that van... We drove down through that street yesterday, and Don and I got out of my van. Well, first thing I was doing was looking for Sue. I didn't know where she had went to. I, she get turned around and got on the other and came back. And, but as I looked at that, I thought, there are people here that, that, that this is about as bad as it's going to be. But you know what? Every person that we talked to was so thankful. They had a reason. And I said, God bless you. And may 2020 be a year of blessings to you. And they would look at me and say, I'm blessed. Amen. Just like we do around this church. Just like we do when we live in, in the comfortable homes that we do and drive our nice cars. We look at all these things. Well, I can tell you this. It's the measure of seed of faith that you put in God that will benefit and make you grow for this next year. How do we have this fertile ground? I quickly want to do this. Roberto, if you'll come and get ready to play. We need get, getting good ground. And how that we will get good ground is this. Hosea 10 tells us this. First, we must sow to ourselves righteousness. That word righteousness simply means that we are in right standing with God. There's only one way to start this, this year off. And that is to make sure that you are in a right relationship with God. You are right with Him. And the only way to do that is to be covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. To have surrendered your life and made Him Lord of your life. And if you'll do that, you'll begin to see the heart open up and God to speak in it. You'll begin to see the mind open up, begin to see it. You see, if I'm, if I'm fighting against God, how could God bless me? Amen? If, I, if I'm robbing God, how can I expect Him to bless me? Come on. If I'm walking in disobedience to God's Word, how can I expect Him to bless me? And so God speaks to us, and we must try to line ourselves up. Listen, I'm not telling you you're going to be perfect, but you must strive after the righteousness of God. We need to stop long enough to say, Lord, am I lining up with what you want for me? Am I right with you today? Is my heart and my mind right with you? You see, and then secondly, we see that he not only tells us we must reap in mercy. We must realize that we can't change ourselves. If we're going to truly see the change that God wants, if we're going to truly see that, you cannot, listen, you can't save yourself. You cannot save yourself from sin. Amen? You are born into a sinful body, and there is no salvation except through Jesus Christ. No matter the works that you try to do, no matter the effort that you make, no matter the struggles that you have, you cannot change your life. You cannot save your soul without surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. Right now across this place, maybe today you have been fighting with God. Maybe you've been running from God. Maybe today you're here and you've been playing games with God. But whatever state that you might find yourself in, you need to understand this. You need to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. The mercy that he gives to us. You see, he didn't give us what we deserve. What we deserved was death and hell. Amen? Come on. There are times when I wondered, God, why do you love me? Have you ever thought that? Have you ever thought, God, why do you love me? Why did you send your son to save a wretch like me? I thought about that when my, my sister went on. I was... I was 12 and she was 10. And when she died, I, I pondered the idea. I, th I thought, Lord, why did you take someone who was so talented? Everybody liked her. She was so pretty. She had beautiful red hair. I said, God, why did you take her instead of me? But see, God had a plan a long time ago what he wanted me to do. To be right here telling you that God loves you. 
And I, I don't always understand everything that God does, but I do know this, and I do, I do want you to grasp this. God is speaking to you, and you can't save yourself, and you've tried. You've tried to fix yourself. You've tried to change yourself. But the only way to truly understand this is you must realize that it is only by the grace of God. It is only by his mercy that you are saved. Right now, right now, I'm speaking to someone's heart. I hope that you're getting this. God wants to forgive you. God wants to change you right now. His mercy is extended to you. You don't have to keep running from God. There's a God who loves you, that has his arms open wide, that wants to embrace you and change your life. God wants that measure of seed to begin to grow again in you. God wants to see you grow again from where you are to begin to see the new growth that God is doing. Third, thirdly, we realize that not only is it the mercy of God, but it's to break up the hardness of your heart. And some of you need to get rid of your hardness, your hurt, your pains. Some of you need to get rid of your bitterness and your anger because you haven't had the, the, the best of things and some difficult situations. And sometimes we get bitter because it didn't work out the way that I wanted it to work. But if you can break up that, that ground and make that soil ready for the, the seed to grow, you got to get rid of that bitterness. There's only one way. That is to say, God, forgive me. I feel like I'm speaking to someone today right now that you're angry. You're angry and you don't even know what you're angry about. You're just angry. You're mad. And you don't even know what you're mad about. And it flares up so quick and you can't understand it. But God is speaking to your heart right now. God is telling you if you're going to grow, you've got to let these things go. You've got to let them go. Pastor, you don't know what they've done to me. I, I, I know what God did for you. I know what he did for you. And no matter what anybody else did for you, God can remove that and separate it so you'll learn to know his love. I feel his presence right here. I feel his presence right here speaking to someone. Ah, Brother Bledsoe, I feel it in my heart today that God is speaking to us. And he's saying, just, just let it go. I'm about to break into my frozen song. I better not though. Let it go, let it go, let it go. It is, it, holding on to that and missing heaven is, is such an important part. You need to let that go so that you can be changed and be used by God to do what he's called you and placed in you to do. Let that hurt go. And let God change your life. And then finally, he says, for it is time to seek the Lord. Church, we have a statewide fast going on for people who can, can and will fast. Some fast one meal a day. Some are fasting a uh, couple meals a day, only eating once a day. Some are fasting everything. Some are just doing water and liquids. Whatever you, you choose to do. I challenged my grandkids last night on the phone. I said, will you fast with me? And they said, well, what are we supposed to fast? I said, well, what do you like? I said, because whatever you, whatever you put before God, you need to put that back. And, and, and my grandson said, so I have to put something away that I, for, for seeking God? And I said, yes. And he goes, I choose my chores. I'll sacrifice and I'll fast my chores. So I said, no, it don't work that way, Carson. It doesn't work that way. Here's what you need to do. The reason that food is such an important part of fasting is because you know we eat to live or some of us just live to eat <laughs> that's my hobby but one of the things that we do is when we put God before that that sustains us it helps us to grow spiritually sometimes even Jesus took time to fast he was without sin but yet he fasted for the purpose of ministry grow and who he was and what he was called to do and, and, and we see this call to prayer and we see this call to seek the Lord. I'm reminded of what it says in 2 Chronicles when he says, If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face, then I will hear their land. Then I will hear their... Listen, there comes a place if we're truly going to break this stronghold over our home and our family, it's going to be because we put God first. We seek him. We seek him. With all that is within us, we seek Him. I'm going to ask you to stand with me all across this place. 
I'm going to close this morning. God, right now, you know every heart. You know every heart and every mind in this place. We came into this place and you were already here. We entered into 2020 and, and we thought we were celebrating a new day and a new opportunity. But God, you already were there. You're already there in our tomorrows. You're already there in our future. You already know what's going on. And God, you're, you're there waiting for us as we enter in to open our hearts up to be prepared to diligently seek and to serve you right now. With every head bowed and eye closed, I'm going to ask you to do this right now. I want you to look within your heart. This is a day of new beginnings. But this new beginning starts with us giving our whole heart and life to Christ. And I believe that I'm speaking and God has touched on so many different things. But as I was preaching, I felt God thumping on heartstrings. I, I felt the Holy Spirit speaking into lives right now. To those who have never totally committed their life to Christ. To those who have been on the outside looking in. To those who have been a, a, a child who has, has looked through the glass but never accepted. God is opening his arms up to invite you to come in. To those who have, have turned away. You've been that prodigal child. You, you've seen God's love. You've embraced his love. You've felt his touch but yet you've turned away to the other things of this world, that seed begins to die and you don't see the hand of God and the blessing that he wants to bring from you. And to those where the cares of life have become so overwhelming that you put God on the back burner as life begins to proceed. I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. God, take this time right now to remind us with our heads bowed and eyes closed, no one looking around today, if you would like to make that commitment to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, to give him all, to give him your life today, to say, Lord, I surrender my life completely and totally to you. I do that by faith in Jesus Christ. I want you to raise your hand right now, right where you're standing. I don't want to embarrass you, but I see those hands. God sees those hands. Listen, I'm not talking to just somebody who's on the outside. I, I'm talking to some of you that, that have been serving God for a long time. God's just saying it's time to get in. So I can bless you, pour into you the way that I want to. God, I surrender all. I surrender all right now to you. Right now, Heavenly Father. Pray this prayer with me very quickly right now to those who raised your hands, to those in this congregation. Just simply reiterate the point that you made a few years ago. Maybe it's refreshing to you to hear it. Maybe you need to speak these words into your own ears so you hear it. As Jesus said to Nicodemus, hear that of the ear, let him hear. Right now. Heavenly Father, I completely surrender my life to you. I accept your son Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I submit to your work, your will in my life. And may I hold on to your hand as you guide me through this. Help me to grow in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Heavenly Father, right now, across this room, across this room, I'm praying, God, for those who struggle to let go of that, to let go of circumstances, of hurts. They may have been hurt. You may have been hurt in a church battle. You may have been hurt in, in, a, in a situation that's beyond your abilities to control. Right now, when you prayed that prayer, you're starting off new. You're starting off again. God's giving you that opportunity. Stop running from God. Run to God right now. Run and embrace this God who loves you, who will heal you and help you. God, right now, break the works of the enemy over each and every life, I pray. Destroy those strongholds and let victory come in this next year. I ask it as we grow together in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. Listen, tonight we start at 6 o'clock. If you can, come be with us. I want you to come celebrate Jesus Christ as we just celebrate our, our victories from last year, testifying and hoping for the new year. Amen? 
God bless you. We'll see you tonight at 6. Come back. Be blessed. Hug somebody's neck before you leave. Tell them you love them in the Lord.